So thanks for checking out this video. So this is my ranking of all of the stories for season two of Creepshow on Shudder. Now, I guess it's over after only five episodes and nine stories to it. A little bit disappointed that we didn't get the same number as the first season, because usually the first season will be the same size or smaller as like a trial uh, season, but um, went a little bit less. From what I hear, what ended up happening is one of the stories ended up being dropped because the person who had something to do with it either wrote it or directed it or both. Uh, there were some allegations leveled against them, so they decided to pull that story. Uh, I still would have been interested in seeing it. I feel like you can still put that out there and then just kind of have a disclaimer in the beginning saying, you know, this had been done prior to the allegations type ordeal. Uh, I feel like that deserves to be out there, but, you know, to each their own, that was the I mean, ultimately, I believe that was probably either Greg Nicotero's choice or Shudder's choice or a combination of the two, but I don't know. My guess is it had to do with Richard Stanley, but I'm not 100% sure. That's just a wild guess on my on my part. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Uh, I'm ranking all the stories from Season 2. I already ranked all the stories from Season 1 from back when it happened, and you can find that on my channel. Uh, I also have an entire playlist on my channel of the reviews of all of the of the episodes of Creep Show, and yeah. Um, also, just so you know, a week after I post this, I will also be posting a ranked list of me going through my ranking of every episode of the Creep Show series, so season one, season two, and all the special stories. So you're gonna want to check that one out if you're checking this out. So let's get into it. My last one is The Right Snuff. Really didn't hit for me. Wasn't a huge fan of it. I think the directing was good. I think Joe Lynch did a great job. The acting was really good. Uh, that was the one in space. I don't want to say too much about it if people haven't seen too much. That was the one in space. It just didn't hit me right. It was too slow. Didn't have enough story to it. Wasn't really feeling it. The, one, the next one up from that, which was like right there with The Right Snuff for me, was Dead and Breakfast. I love the fact that Allie Larder was in it. She did a great job. See Thomas Howe. The acting in general in it was really good. Directing was quite good, but um, the story was very lacking for me and just not that interesting. Then above that one, we have Within the Walls of Madness. That was the one that had to do with... Uh, that kind of had like a space feel to it. It was very kind of H.P. Lovecraft-esque. Didn't really like the CGI in it. Seemed a little bit off story-wise, but not terrible. I mean, I enjoyed it enough. Then the one above that is Sibling Rivalry. That one I thought was fun. I thought the comedy was very well integrated into that particular one. The CGI used in it, though, was bad. It was very wonky. Didn't really like it, just like the one I mentioned before it. So I don't like those aspects of it. I know a lot of people with that story didn't like the young speak in it, but that's a thing. Like, that's how young people talk. It's going to happen. Uh, the one above that, I have Night of the Living Late Show. That was the one with Justin Long that was in basically its own episode for episode five. Um, that one I thought was interesting. I especially like what they did there, how they kind of fused, like, um, technology with old film, if you know what I mean, if you've seen it, uh, really cool technique. I felt like it shouldn't have been stretched to be as long as it was because it got very slow and yeah, but other than that, I enjoyed it enough. The one above that, I put Model Kid. That one had a lot of awesome nostalgia. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Some cool practical effects as well. And Kevin Dillon is always good, always good. So I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Then above that, I have Pesticide. Not just because, but a big accent point on that episode is Keith David. I know I talked about it during my review of it, but Keith David is a joy. Whenever you can get him on camera, he just chews the scenery. He steals the show. He eats it all up. Love him. Ashley Lawrence was really nice in that one, too. She gave a really nice performance. And Josh McDermott, I think, was his name. So, in general, like, the acting in that one was great. A little bit wonky on some of the CGI stuff, but there were some really great practical effects in this. They went big on, in a few different ways, they went big on that. Uh, and the story wasn't, like, a phenomenal story, but it was it was compelling enough. It worked. And I think the, per the acting performances, in particular, sold that episode. So, I really like that one. Then above that, in my number two slot, is Pipe Screams. This is another one that Joe Lynch did. I thought the way it was shot was really cool. I thought that um, acting, once again, really great. Good to see Barbara Crampton in there, once again. 
Uh, she's always fun. I just love her personality. She's such a cool person. And um, I just thought the story was fun. The way it was shot was fun. There was a really good amount of comedy to it, but also an interest level where you really didn't know where the story was going to go. I do feel like it finished a little bit flat, but I was willing to overlook that just because it would it looked so good, it was so engaging, and it was funny and fun, and that's why it's my second one. That leaves, obviously, everyone knows this, Public Television of the Dead. That one I loved. It ranks at the top of, not the top top, but pretty close up there for favorite uh, stories within the whole creep show series, man, it's, um, it was really good. I mean, the callback to Evil Dead stuff and Ted Raimi in it, and just the story was really compelling, really well written, very funny, very engaging, had some great, great, great practical effects. That one was awesome, 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 awesome. Um, so yeah, so that's my ranking basically for it. Like I said, look forward to my comprehensive ranking list that I'll be putting out a week from dropping this one. Uh, I do just want to say, though, I took a look at it, and I looked at how I ranked all the episodes from the, or the, all the stories from the first season versus all the stories for the second season. And overall, I definitely did like the first season more, not just because there were three more stories to it and one more episode, but I liked it because I felt like the stories were a little more consistent, and it was a little more on the creepy side. I think that creepy slash scary side. Uh, I think that said, though, I still enjoyed season two. I'm not honestly that hard to please when it comes to anthology type stuff. I go into anthology things knowing it's always going to be a mixed bag. It is almost always going to be a mixed bag with anthology things. I cannot think of many anthology anything where I, w I liked all of it. So if I get a few things that I quite like and a few things that I love, I'm good. I'm always expecting there will be stuff I don't like. Plus, the episodes, I mean, the stories are so short that if I don't like it, I don't feel like I really wasted time. I'm fine with that. And it is just cool to see, as someone commented on one of my reviews, it's cool to see what the actors, writers, directors experiment with. And as long as the stories they're putting out aren't repeating themselves, they're not feeling like they're the same, I'm fine. As long as you're giving me new material, I'm good. Let's go. Plus, I love Greg Nicotero. I think he's an awesome dude. I've listened to a bunch of interviews with him, and he seems like an awesome dude, and I dig what he's doing. So, season three is going to happen. That had already been announced uh, some months ago, I believe. So, we will be getting a season three. Not quite sure when that is. Maybe sometime in September or something, but I haven't been told. So, we'll find out. But rest assured, I'll be reviewing each and every episode and each and every story when that happens. And then I will do a whole ranking list for season three and then a comprehensive ranking list once again. So anyway, thanks for checking this out. Oh, this is what I want from you. If you want to comment, put in the comments your ranking for the stories for season two and season one if you want to. Go ahead and do that because I did that for season one and it was just really cool to look through the comments and see how different people's rankings were. I mean, I've already seen people making comments about how they, like, love the right snuff, even though I really didn't like it. That's the great thing about this. Everyone's opinion's different, and I just love to hear what other people are thinking and why. I love it. So please put those comments down there. Also, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. That's your way to repay me if you like any single video I have ever done. And if you like more than one video I've done, you should certainly be a subscriber because I'm trying to build this nerdy horror community here. And um, that's your way to repay me and it keeps me motivated to keep doing this. Also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, whether it's a ranking video like this, a in-depth movie review video, no spoilers, haul video, unboxing video, blah, 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 blah. But regardless, I thank you for taking your time to check this out. I really do. And until next time, keep it brutal.